Audi is one of those car companies that use strange letter and number combinations to name their vehicles. At first glance, this can be a little overwhelming, and it can be very easy to confuse one model with another. Today, I'm going to introduce you properly to Audi's naming system, and at the end of the video, you're going to be just as fluent in Audi as the hardest core fanatics. Alright, starting off, we need a teensy little dab of history. When these naming systems were imagined, SUVs weren't a thing. Hence, most car companies that use an alphanumeric naming structure for their models had to stuff, with differing levels of grace, a lot of new models into their dialects. So as we begin, we're going to imagine we live in a world without crossovers and SUVs. But don't worry, we'll circle back. The basic Audi model has a letter followed by a number. The letter represents how, or how not, sporty the model is, and the number represents the size of the vehicle. Here in the US, by the way, I'm only going to be talking about US models in this video, we have six differently sized models. But before I elaborate on that, I want to introduce you to the first of five letters in the Audi alphabet. A. A models are standard models. They're not oriented for performance. Now that doesn't mean an A model can't be sporty, it just means that there will always be more sportier versions above it. So here in the US, we have the A3, the A4, the A5, the A6, the A7, and the A8. As you can probably tell, the larger the number, the larger the car. Easy peasy. Now I'll come back and explain those specific models and body styles in a second, but first I want to introduce you to the next two letters in the alphabet, S and R. S models are a step up from A models in performance. They have bigger engines, sportier driving characteristics, and more aggressive styling. Here in the US, we have S models of all of the A models, meaning we have the S3, S4, S5, S6, S7, and S8. But if you want the ultimate top dog alpha Audi in a specific size, you should go for the RS models. Audi pours everything they've got into their RS models to make them as fast and as good to drive as possible. Not all models receive the RS treatment though. Here in the US, we have the RS3, the RS5, the RS6, and the RS7. All right, so I've just thrown a lot of names at you, but let's break down those models, starting with the A3. The A3, S3, and RS3 are subcompact sedans. The A4 is a compact vehicle offered in both sedan and all-road forms. All-road basically means a wagon that's lifted with plastic cladding. Think of the Subaru Outback. The S4 is only offered as a compact sedan. The A5, S5, and RS5 are compact vehicles offered in coupe, convertible, and sportback forms. A sportback is essentially a sedan with a sloping rear roof and a hatchback instead of a trunk. The A6 is a mid-size vehicle offered in both sedan and all-road form. The S6 is offered as a mid-size sedan, while the RS6 is only offered as a mid-sized wagon. And Audi calls wagons Avants. The A7, S7, and RS7 are mid-size sportbacks, and last but not least, the A8 and the S8 are full-size sedans. Oofta! That was a lot of information. And now it's time for more information as I introduce SUVs to you. The turn of the millennium ushered in a new era of cars on stilts. These vehicles have become increasingly popular around the world and make up almost every car company's top seller. But how is Audi going to distinguish their new SUVs from the rest of their cars with their current naming system? The answer? Add a letter to the alphabet. And the letter Audi came up with? Q. So now you know when you see a Q in front of a number, that means it's a crossover or SUV. So here in the US, we have the Q3, the Q5, the Q7, and the Q8. So you might be logically thinking, Audi just kept the size association with the number the same and simply put a Q in front instead of an A. Wrong. Well, except for the Q3, where the A3 was a subcompact sedan, the Q3 is a subcompact SUV. Everything else has moved up one number. So the Q5 is the compact SUV, where the A4 was the compact sedan. The Q7 is the three-row midsize SUV, where the A6 was the midsize sedan. And the Q8 is a swoopy sportback midsize SUV, where the A7 was the sportback midsized non-SUV. Why would Audi do this? Honestly, I don't know. Maybe Audi thought the larger numbers would appear more substantial for the larger prices the crossovers charge. Anyways, we're not done yet, because Audi wanted to give some of their SUVs the sporty treatment. And that creates a little dilemma. 
You see, you can't just drop the Q and put an S, as was done with the A in the non-SUVs, because then they would have the same name as the non-SUVs that already exist. Audi needed to be able to differentiate their sporty SUVs from their sporty non-SUVs. So then someone had the brilliant idea. Stick the S in front of the Q. So they did just that, and here in the US we have the SQ5, the SQ7, and the SQ8. We also have one RS SUV in the form of the RSQ8. At this point you're probably thinking, wow, that's a nice little naming system Audi's come up with for themselves. And you'd be right, except for the fact that there are three models that we have not discussed yet. First is the Audi TT. T, by the way, is the fifth letter in the Audi alphabet for those of you taking notes at home. The TT is a little two-door sports car that's been in Audi's lineup for about 20 years. It's available as a coupe or convertible, and it's a fun little car. And to make it even funner, <laughs> Audi wanted to give the TT S and RS treatments. But where to stick the S and RS? Oh, I hear you saying. Drake, you said that Audi stuck the S and RS in front of the Q for their SUVs. I bet that's what they did for the TT. Wrong. For whatever reason, Audi decided to put the S and RS behind TT. So in the US, we have the convertible and coupe TTS and the coupe only TTRS. The second model I haven't mentioned yet is one that you're probably familiar with if you've seen any good Marvel movie of late. The R8 is Audi's flagship supercar and Tony Stark's go-to daily driver. Rest in peace, Tony Stark. And the R8 name kind of makes sense when you think about it. Only the fastest Audis have R in their name, and 8 is the largest number in Audi's world. Thus, the R8. And it is available in both coupe and spider convertible forms. The third and last model I have to mention to you today is the Audi e-tron. This is Audi's first all-electric car. Now if I was Audi, I would have called this the Q6 because it slots in nicely size-wise right between the Q5 and the Q7, but I understand Audi wanted to differentiate their electric car. The e-tron is available in both standard and sportback forms. And an S version is on the way, and it seems that Audi is going to follow the TT's mold and put the S behind the e-tron. So it shall be dubbed the e-tron S. One last thing I should mention before I go is Quattro. Quattro is Audi's cool all-wheel drive system, and I think this is why they decided to go with Q for the letter for their SUVs, because all of their SUVs come with Quattro all-wheel drive. But that's it! You are now an Audi aficionado. If you like this video, I'll make similar videos for BMW and Mercedes who have far more complex alphanumeric structures. Thanks for watching, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.